All right, take a look at this graph here. This is a key component to the week 11 content, which lays out the 20th century for the first 90 years, up to 2000, next the first 100 years, from the beginnings of the 20th century, which is 1900, all the way through the 90s, just to give you a broad general idea about a new topic here that we call pop music. My definition of pop music a little different than maybe what um, you might know of. But in order to be popular, pop music must have a means of distribution down here. And so for every decade, now you'll notice the decades in the first column is 20 years long. That's because things were just kind of getting rolling here. <laughs> um, and there was a war in between this. And so things didn't change as quickly back then. You see the 20s, the 30s, the 1940s, 1950s, 60s, 70s, and on, where things kind of changed every 10 years. You also know from the 60s going forward that more than one popular style became dominant, where in this era of the 20s, jazz was it, and then in the 30s, swing bands, etc. So let me go through it for you, see what it is. The dominant style means maybe, I guess you might say, the most popular styles. But band music in this particular case right here refers to John Philip Sousa, the marching bands, the band music we talked about already. There's your major pop star. If I was to pick one pop star of the era, this would be the one. Um, most of the time that's based on sales of records, but Sousa was just that there was nobody else. It was him. Uh, that was from 1900 to 1919, both on both sides of World War I, which was 1914 to 1918. Through the means of distributing his music throughout the country was the railroad. In the 20s, after the war is over, jazz occurs for the first time. Out of New Orleans, your pop star is Louis Armstrong. And the way people heard his music was not through the railroad, but the phonograph, the early record player, the early means of playing back music, which I'll show you some examples of next week. Um was the way that his music got heard. He did travel too, of course. He started in New Orleans as a kid, and then went to Chicago, and then eventually to New York. The 30s is swing music, a different style. I've got examples in the classes, in the content area, uh, this week. And your biggest star, really, that era was Benny Goodman, a white Jewish musician from Chicago on the west side. He went to Austin High School, and he used to take the L down to the south side to hear a guy named Louis Armstrong, a black musician from New Orleans, and he adapted that style. He was very popular due to the radio, which becomes a means. In the 40s, we have the singer, the crooner with the big band. Frank Sinatra is your star. And even though he was heard on radio, he certainly was heard on record, he was the one that started to really make a name for himself by use of the movies. People went to the movies a lot in the 40s. This is during World War II. And of course, all the boys were off fighting World War II. There weren't a lot of men around in this country. The women were working. And Frank Sinatra became a rock star, a pop star. So what you need to know, importantly, is that after World War II, this pop music here all involves horns, you see? The band music, the jazz music with horns, the swing music with horns. The big bands with horns, see, Frank Sinatra would stand in front of a big band and sing. But after World War II, there's a key break here. Now the roots are guitar music, secular black blues and country uh, guitar music mixed together in something called rock and roll. The horns are out now as, a main, as the main instrument, guitars in. And even though Elvis played very little guitar, the idea of a pop star, a, sing, a male singer singing, had really taken hold, and Elvis was the number one seller of records in the 50s. Yet he sang all black cover songs. The cover song is any song sung by a white entertainer uh, that was written by or performed by first by a black entertainer. We'll talk about that a little later, maybe next week. And the most popular means of distributing the music at that point was the 45 RPM. This is a smaller record with a big hole in it. I'll show you that stuff next week when we talk about the music business and how music is sold. In the 60s, rock, 
comes into play, Motown begins to make a really strong appearance uh, out of Detroit and something called psychedelic rock towards the end of the period. But clearly, this, the Beatles, the four Beatles, like having four Elvises in one band, all writers, all singers, um, were clearly far and away uh, the leaders of that era. They still to this day are the group most with the most record sales anywhere in the world globally, and they continue to sell today, both as a group and as individuals. And the LP album, the big album, which will again I'll show you this technology next week, is the way it gets around. In the 70s, it breaks up a little more. You get more styles that are already big because the country's buying. This is when you know people my age are in their 20s, where there's a lot of us. There's 70 million of us, more than any other generation we're buying tons of stuff punk comes in earth wind and fire for example country rock folk rock disco is comes in punk you know my american music class studies this so various stars there's various stars i mean there's there's big stars in all of these categories but the small cassette player comes into play replaces the lp here in the 80s the hard rock the adult contemporary which we call today 80s rock R&B, house comes in R&B. It's very different than rhythm and blues of the 50s. But black music is very, very strong here. Uh, where in the 50s, the black artists were not the stars, but they, with some key exceptions. Uh, they didn't make as much money as the white stars did. But in here, boom, 80s, Michael Jackson blows everybody away. He's number one. He's king of pop, right? Still doesn't have as many records sold as the Beatles. But keep in mind, he died early at one, you know, and, uh, but they just had, they're still so active in terms of record sales of Beatles. CDs came into play in the 80s. And in the 90s, you get some things like alternative, metal, heavy, different kind of R&B, country, rap comes into play key here. Of course, rap begins back here in the late 70s in the Bronx, New York. That history, I go into in depth in my American music class. But here, uh, Solo singers become the real rage. And it's not just one Michael. It's a bunch of them. Female and male both. Solo rappers, etc. And the digital hard drive takes over. And then, of course, we get into the 2000s. If we go further, we talk about streaming and all that kind of stuff. So that's what I want you to know. And you need to know how this lays out. Now, on your test, you're going to see opportunities where... This might be blank. That might be blank. And you're going to have to fill that in. It's a real challenging. So I'd study this for this week. All right. Uh, just a broad overview, um, but important to know how the 20th century looks. And next week's kind of fun because I talk about all these technologies and I talk about all the record companies and all how the money is made down here and how people are determined to be a top seller and how do you count streams versus records back here you had to sell something a hard record you know you had to sell records in here or cds or whatever so all right uh that's kind of the end of your videos for this week 11 hope you enjoy it bye